let's go what the Anycast series started with. In the very first episode, we started a new Rails 7 and Hotwire project from scratch, a multi-channel messaging system, and we also introduced Anycable to handle WebSockets and one of the newest Anycable features, uh, a built-in token-based authentication using JWT tokens. And today I want to talk about this feature a bit more. And more specifically, I'd like to talk about tokens expirations and how to deal with them. Let me first demonstrate what potential problems could occur when you use tokens for authentication. Uh, let's change our any cable configuration a bit and add a JWT time to live. So that's the number of seconds a token should be considered valid. That's the responsibility of the server to verify this expiration. And this uh, functionality is built in into any cable go. So we change it to just five seconds, uh, just for the demonstration purposes. So uh, let's open a browser and see uh, the logs, the network logs. We can see that uh, our connection URL contains a token query param. That's how we generate it in the meta tag. And let's emulate a network description. For that, we can use Google Chrome building debugging tools, dev tools. In this case, we're going to use network throttling. We can emulate network absence, like see that what's going to happen if our browser went offline. Unfortunately, it doesn't disconnect uh, persistent connections right away. So the socket itself is still alive. At, at the network layer. But hopefully Action Cable implements application level heartbeat. It waits for ping messages and if none arrived in a specific period of time, it automatically tries to reconnect. And that's what we see here. That's a problem. Action Cable tries to reconnect using the same URL we used initially. Then the URL contained the token, but the token has become invalid because it expired. And we can see that our server responds with token expired error. And it asks a client to disconnect and not try to reconnect. What does it mean? Uh, that means that our client state became no longer operable and uh, we don't receive any updates. Our live updates just turned off. And we don't know about it. Like the page is working, we can perform Ajax request or whatever, but the cable is disconnected. And we need a way to deal with this, to refresh the token actually, to request a new one. One way of doing that is just to hit reload button and uh, reload the page completely. So not just uh, turbo drive reload, but full page reload to reload meta tags, which contain action cable URL. But that's not a good way of dealing with it, right? And we need something else. That's the point where I want to introduce any cable client, any cable JavaScript client. The main purpose of it is to provide additional features uh, for action cable and any cable applications. So it's kind of a different implementations of the client with built-in extensions capabilities. So we can use different protocols, uh, we can use different formats for messages like binary formats. It supports uh, Node.js and React Native out of the box and so on. So you can read more about it in our blog post at evilmartians.com. But today we're mostly interested in one built-in features of the client library which uh, calls refreshing authentication tokens. So this feature was added to the client uh, together with the AnyCable JWT identification support, so the, which, which we already has in our application. So the feature allows you to automatically refresh an expired token without doing any specific work. Any cable client recognizes the token expired error uh, reason, disconnection reason uh, from server. So whenever server sends this response asking a client to disconnect, 
we can see that, okay, the reason was token expired, we can refresh it. And uh, the refresh mechanism, which comes with this library, you can implement your own, but the one we already have is refreshing the token from the web page. Under the hood, uh, any cable client fetch the current page again, parse it, extract the meta tag with action cable URL, and use it for reconnection. This is how we can renew the token. So let's see how we can add any cable client to our application. First of all, we need to add any cable client library. We use import maps, so we need to pin a new dependency. And for our application, we need any cable web package, which contains uh, browser specific utilities uh, for client side uh, logic. And the one we're going to use is fetching a token from HTML. So let's take a look at our import map config. So we have any cable web. Any cable core, which is a core implementation of the client uh, platform agnostic. And we also have a nano, nano events, it's just the only dependency of any cable library. Let's preload all of them because we need them on every page, on every occasion, and it makes sense to add them right away. And I prefer to keep like third party dependencies at the top of the list and everything else, especially pin all from at the bottom. Okay, now we need to tell Turbo Rails, which we import here, to use any cable client. First of all, let's create a cable JS with any cable client definition. Let's take a look at the documentation one more time and see what we can do here. Any cable client comes with built-in action cable client compatibility mode, so we can use any cable client interchangeably uh, with action cable consumer. And for that, we just need to import methods uh, or function, as they call in JavaScript, uh, create consumer and use it. So let's just do that. This is our consumer or cable. And then uh, the only missing point is how to tell Hotwire to use our custom consumer instead of the action cable. And to figure that out, let's take a look at the source code of TurboRails library. So let's go to the GitHub and see what we have here. So we have index and we have Hotwire Turbo and we have some kind of cable. Now what's the cable? Let's take a look. So that there are a few functions here. The one that imports uh, action cable and creates a consumer. And we also have a helper to subscribe to a channel, subscribe to. Finally, we have set consumer function, which seems like something we're looking for. Let's try to use it. In order to import this function, we should use cable namespace because it's exported as cable. So let's update our import to use the cable container. And also let's import our any cable cable. So since cable name is already declared, we can call it any cable. Finally, we want to call set consumer any cable. In order to import a cable decoration to work, we need to declare it in the our import map. Don't forget to do that. So pin cable to cable JS and let's start our server and see whether the correct JavaScript implementation of Action Cable Client has been picked up. So this is our application. Let's open a developer tools console and hit reload. So this is our network tab and our WebSocket connection. We see that WebSocket is alive. It seems to work, but the question is who is initiator? So this cable JS is from Hotwire and uh, this consumer is from action cable client library. This is not any cable code. Why so? Let's see what happens here. We're going to add breakpoint at get consumer. And also, let's add a breakpoint to our set consumer. 
and try to figure out why this didn't work out. And we see that get consumer is invoked before our set consumer breakpoint. That means that actually we weren't able to override this default behavior. The create consumer for action cable was called and only after that we set our consumer. So that means that even though we have this method, this function, it's not an official API, right? And it doesn't meant to be a method to provide a custom consumer for turbo streams. In other words, there is no way to do that. So we cannot connect any cable client to turbo streams, to turbo rails, JavaScript library. Let's take a look at the source code one more time to understand what's going on here from the code perspective. So this is a index.js. That's a file which is loaded when we import uh, hotwire turbo rails. And we can see that cable stream source element is required at the very beginning of the file. And here we import cable and uh, that's all the things that happened here. Uh, important point is that we define custom elements right in this document. So at the load time, whenever we import turbo rails, a custom element is defined. And if there are some elements on the page, they are activated. And that makes uh, this library to trigger subscribe to, which in its turn trigger create consumer and makes it use action cable. And our set consumer has no effect at the load time. For subsequent uh, stream elements, stream source elements, uh, that would af have effect, but for the initial page load, it doesn't work. The only workaround I found so far is to just to not to not use Turbo Rails library and use Hotwire Turbo and custom element definition instead. So let's do that. We need to import. Hotwire Turbo library because it's not in our import map yet. So here it is. Let's move it up. We don't need Turbo Rails anymore. Let's use preload here and go to our application JS. So replacing it with Turbo and uh, we don't need cable because it doesn't have cable. Now we need to restore our stream source element behavior. I suggest just copying this source code stream source element JS. The only change we need here is our subscription logic. So we already have a cable. Let's import it here as cable. And our uh, cable is compatible with action cable API. So this action cable consumer and we can use it like this subscriptions create no evade keyword because this is not a promise. This is just a synchronous code. And that's that's the only change we need here. Finally, we don't need this anymore. And what we need is import stream source element. And don't forget to add it to the import map. Let's run our server again and see what's going to happen now. So this is our browser. Let's hit reload. And again, we see that cable is connected and it works. And what is initiator? Huh. And now it looks different because it's any cable client. Uh, it looks different. It has class uh, cable. So it's class based API and that works. So that's what we want it to do. But uh, so now let's see Again, uh, what's going to happen if we go offline? No more ping messages here. We can see stale connection warning. This is any cable client library logs. And now let's go online. And now we see disconnect and reason token expired. And it says reconnect false. So we switch to any cable client, but we still haven't solved the problem with token expirations. We need to add one more thing to our cable configuration. Let's take a look again at our 
documentation and token refreshing section and we can see that we need to import fetch token from HTML function and use it as token refraction for our cable. So let's do that. Fetch token from HTML. Let's take a look at the documentation one more time and see, okay, that this should be a function call because we import a kind of a constructor of a fetcher. So uh, let's reload the page. We have a WebSocket connection. Let's make it stale. Okay. And now let's go online again. We have token expired, reconnect false, right? But we have another WebSocket connection here. It is successful where it comes from. It comes from our refresher. And if we can take a look here, we see that token is different. So we obtained a new token somehow. If we add Ajax network request logs to the equation, we can see there was an Ajax call to the same URL in between this token expired and successful WebSocket connection calls. And that's what that call was made by fetch token from HTML refresher. That's what I was talking about in the beginning. So the page was fetched in the background a meta tag has been extracted and used for subsequent cable connections. That's how it works. And that's actually pretty much it about this functionality. And this is one of the reasons you might want to use any cable client, but not the only. We're going to talk about other features in the future episodes. I want to add a few notes for this episode regarding the refreshing mechanism and regarding the kind of a monkey patching we had to do to make it work. First, uh, speaking of uh, token refresh mechanism, this is a source code. And we can see that there is a room for optimization. We don't need to render the whole page when there is a token refresh request. We can actually render only the head uh, part of the layout, only the token. And for that, we can rely on a specific header, which any cable client adds to the separation. So that's something you can do yourself if you think that it worth the effort. Uh, in most cases, just reloading the page uh, should be good enough unless the page is kind of a heavy, uh, data heavy. So in performance multiple database requests, for example, you can specify a custom URL for refreshing, not the current URL. So there are many options. Or you can write your own refresher, which gonna just uh, send Ajax requests to JSON endpoint and uh, retrieve the token, only the token. So the customization is yours. That's the first point. And also I would like to talk about the hack we used to integrate any cable client with TurboStreams. Well, I don't think that's a good idea to copy and paste functionality and make it work. Uh, instead, I think that someone should do that for you and uh, like publish as a library or whatever. And that's what we did at the part of any cable client initiative. So now we have a specific package called any cable turbo stream, which kind of a result of this any guest episode. So I decided to extract this functionality into a library and that's how we can use it in your project without thinking about dealing with stream elements or whatever. Uh, it just works. The main difference from Turbo Rails is that uh, the activation of source elements, of, HTML, of custom HTML elements is explicit. You should call the start function and pass uh, action cable consumer uh, actually any cable consumer, not action cable, uh, to this method uh, and uh, uh, start processing this custom tags. You can also use uh, a different tag name if you want to use it all together with uh, Turbo Rails for some unknown reason. This is uh, it. This was a pretty short episode because, you know, everything we needed just to integrate a library and configure it. And it could be even shorter if TurboRails would have this functionality 
for customizing the consumer, but unfortunately it doesn't. So we have to build it ourselves. And we're gonna use actually our TurboStream package for future Anycable features uh, later. So stay tuned, bye.